that's one of the prime goals of my training aid is to teach you to turn your devils into angels. But while you're doing that, you actually learn a lot about how momentum is exchanged through the body and how force is delivered and how players create club head speed. It's four fifths of its technique. The other part is like, hey, okay, how big and strong and how much pressure can I suck out of the ground to get it going fast? But uh, if you don't understand how velocity exchanges throughout the body and especially between the arms and the club system, it's very difficult. And this is where the old school teachers were so much better than I think a lot of the new school teachers that they taught you how to swing your hands and arms and let your body learn how to react to that. And that's very much my methodology. So I don't feel like I'm technical in that way in the way that I teach the golf swing, but I feel like I have a strong technical knowledge on how the physics of the swing works. and getting better every day at communicating that as simply as I possibly can, which is really what my YouTube channel is all about. Golf Smarter, number 752. Your hands are devils. Here's how to turn them into golf angels with Dan Martin. This is Golf Smarter, sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Dan. Uh, how's it going, Fred? Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. You come highly recommended from Roger Gunn. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, Roger's a really good guy, so that's very, very Roger's nice of him. Been on, yeah, he's been on the show a lot, and um, I told him I was coming down to the area, and he goes, well, you, you have to play Rustic Canyon. I'm like, oh, well, you're not the first person to say that. A lot of people have been saying, you got to play Rustic Canyon. So he, he said, then you've got to meet Dan. You're going to love talking to Dan. <laughs> well, cool. That's very nice of him. <laughs> Roger and I don't spend all that much time together other than uh, usually when we play uh, play chapter tournaments, he usually beats me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how that goes. <laughs> well, he has a tremendous amount of pro professional respect for you. Oh, that's great. Well, likewise, likewise. He's a great guy. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So let, let's spend a couple minutes talking about Rustic Canyon Golf Course. Um, okay. Where is Moore Park? How do people go? Moore Park, I've never heard of it. How do they figure out where this golf course is? Well, we would start from Los Angeles and then we would uh, we would travel up through the San Fernando Valley, which is kind of northwest of, of downtown L.A. And then you just keep going west through Simi Valley and you run right into Moore Park. Um, and it's also just north of Thousand Oaks. So those would be kind of two two towns that, uh, that, uh, that kind of sandwich, uh, around, uh, around Moore park. So it's so in, inland a bit, not near the coast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's only about 20 miles from the coast. So not tremendously oh. far from the coast. Um, Great. but, but, uh, yeah, in, inland a little bit in kind of like coastal, we would call it a coastal Valley basically is where, uh, where Moore park is. <clears throat> and is it literally in a Canyon? Is it yeah, it is. Yeah. So the, the golf course is in, in a canyon. I mean, it's not like uh, some some vast uh, Grand Canyon looking thing, but uh, it's definitely its, its own its own little canyon. <clears throat> is there a lot of elevation change on the course? Uh, yeah, it's, it's subtle, really uh, it's dramatic. Like, uh, you know, some courses you have these huge drops from tee box to fairway, but it has a very subtle, uh, a subtle um, elevation change of roughly 500 feet, actually, from the lowest part where you drive in from the gate to the highest possible tee box. But you certainly don't get that sense um, until you've walked it a few times and you start learning which way is uphill and which way is downhill. But it, it definitely has a, a just nice overall, a very soft, gentle grade, <clears throat> which makes, uh, makes putting interesting because people feel it's flat. But everything breaks down towards the uh, towards the gate or we call it breaks to the gate where's where you drive in from where the low point of the course is. <clears throat> and is the gate west or east of <laughs> with the course is the gate, the gate a lot of is, people think that breaks to the water breaks to the water and right, right. Say, no, it breaks to the irrigation yeah exactly it breaks it breaks to where downhill goes <laughs> where the water runs but yeah the, the gate is like it's pretty much due south of the uh of the clubhouse okay but and you probably have westerly wind flows um yeah yeah westerly wind, wind flow the west. but rustic is known like the like the best time to play it is winter time into early early yeah, kind of yeah through late fall early winter because it dries out and it plays like the lynx course it's designed to be um so it doesn't require so much water and it gets fast and it gets firm but the with that comes the threat of the santa Ana offshore winds which can blow 60 70 miles an hour through rustic so we we have wind out days at rustic but yeah. the prevailing wind really? right now yeah like right now from like april through September, you get a, you pretty much get an ocean breeze kicking up right about 10, 11 a.m. Stays with you most of the day. Gets a little hot, but not ridiculously hot. And uh, and that's your kind of typical 10 to 15 mile hour. Um, you know, again, we call it a sea breeze or an ocean breeze, or a west wind if you want to. Mm -hmm. 
I, I hear I hear Santa Ana winds, and the first thing I think of are fires. Yes, you guys had problems. Oh yeah, with that? yeah. Actually, uh, just before, like I've been at Rustic almost since it opened. I, I came in, I came in and set up shop there in 2003. Um, at the very end of 2003, two months before I came there, a raging fire pretty much burnt all the hills in Simi Valley, Moore Park, all the way out mm-hmm. towards Ventura. It was a big, big fire, and yeah, Rustic, uh, Rustic uh, got all the all of its um, brush singed. And then, of course, that set up a flood in 2005, which actually slightly changed the golf course. Uh, it got some of the holes down at the uh, the low part of the course uh, were buried in mud for about five months before we were able to restructure it and, and get it back uh, get it back going. It did a little uh, it did a little redesign on some of Gil Hans's holes too. <laughs> oh my, that's pretty awful. So what what is the kind of uh, well you said it's Lynx style course? Yeah, it's it's Not truly a Lynx. Yeah, it's an Australian lynx is what Gil Hans calls it. So it's really it's okay. really a very a Royal Melbourne's a very similar looking golf course. Um, mm-hmm. So it it pretty much is it's very wide. It's very expansive. It has very large greens uh, with a lot of a lot of undulation. Um, they can be quite speedy at times as well. And then just the the golf course kind of like fades into the natural the natural vegetation around. And so it has, it very much has that look again, Australian Lynx, but it, but it plays like a Lynx style course. The unique thing about Rustic is it has, you have the greens, which are large, and then you have what we call the approach areas, which are the same type of grass as the green. Uh, it's like a bent POA mixture these days, but those are mowed down and shaved down. So you have all these very tight lie chipping areas around virtually every green. So it has, so it almost looks like the greens are like monstrous, like they're, you know, 30,000 square feet. <laughs> But uh, but in reality, the greens are about 10,000 square feet ish. Some are bigger, some are smaller, but it has this huge chipping area around and it just gets it gets firm and fast. So you play, you know, the golf course asks you to play and run the ball in. It doesn't ask you to play it through the air. So it really has that, that you know, you really get the Scottish link style feel, but it looks like an Australian links would be the way I would I would most uh, would, would, would call it as far as like the visual. Help me with that. Define the difference between Australian and Scottish links. Because I've played a course up here that's called Australian. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I have no idea what that means. Is that a lot of sand? Is that, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's kind of like it's Australian. Those courses are built on the built on sand, you know, sandlands basically. Um, so yeah. rustic, rustic very is a very sand based kind of golf course. Actually, it has a lot of a lot of. It's kind of built in a wash basically. Um, hence why it got flooded out in one of those crazy 50 year rains we've had back in back in 2005. Um, so it, but it, it, you know, it drains really fast. It doesn't hold water a lot and it tends to get, you know, it tends to get very, very firm and, uh, and firm and bouncy. And, uh, you, you get to play all kinds of, all kinds of crazy shots. I mean, you can be putting from 50 yards if you want to, um, you can hit, you know, a low run and bump and run sometimes or you can, you can fly it in there, but you always got to play the bounce when it plays, when it plays to its characteristics, which is fun. So you don't get to, you don't just need to go fly, you know, fire a shot in there, stop it and spin it. You got to go, even with a wedge, it's going to bounce once then maybe stop. And so you really got to know, you got to really know your angles and a lot of the greens, you know, the way they're pitched depending on the hole location. I mean, either the, either the ball's going to feed, so you're going to get some really easy birdie opportunities, but you can get a lot of them where if like uh, the number 12th uh, short par four is just devilish, it's got just kind of, it almost like sits like a Donald Ross green. And boy, if that pins in certain spots, I mean, you fire at it, if you're just a foot off, boom, bounces off the green. I mean, you got to chip. So, so, so you can drive it down there right next to the green and then you have like a 50 yard shot and you're like, uh, this is really difficult. (laughs) So it's fun. It's it's a fun golf course because I mean you just don't need to really get it airborne to play it very much. So you can be novice and play it, but it has so much challenge as far as like shot making value. And it's reasonably long from the back tees. It's about seven thousand at par seventy two. So I mean it's just a favorite of so many players. It's just a really well designed golf course. They didn't move a lot of dirt to build it. Uh, Gil said he pretty much like just it was already there. He just kind of like uncovered it and wow. uh, and just just really fit it into the land. So they did very very little. Uh, very little uh, earth moving. The other unique thing about Rustic is it was built in kind of the golf course boom when we, when we thought that Tiger Woods was going to make golf the most popular thing <laughs> in the world. And there, you know, and you know, and but uh, the owner uh, Craig Price, uh, he built a golf course with a really smart, and he's still the owner, really smart model. I said, I'm going to make this about the golf, about the public golfer, about not having a lot of tournaments, and really make a place for people to come that is a high quality but very good value. And so, you know, for green fees that are very reasonable, you get a golf course that plays 
really nice. I mean, you always have really good greens. The tees are good. And the fairways are, I mean, the fairways are hit and miss depending on kind of what time of year it is. But, but overall the condition of the golf course is really good. And you're not, you're not playing, you're not, you're not paying, you know, Orange County prices back in golf hate day, $200 around you're paying 60, 60, 70, $80. I guess we're probably up and around 80 now with cart. Um, but it's great golf course. It's very walkable. Um, you know, and, uh, and that's what I, I'd recommend playing it on foot. I think it's way more fun to play that golf course on foot than, than, sure. uh, than, than in a cart. And it's just a, yeah, it's just a blast. It's, it's a, but it's a, for old guys team. like me who don't carry a bag. I'm a push cart kind yeah, of Yeah. Trolley it all the way. Yeah. Push, push yeah, carts are great. Good. So if you're, if you're looking at your GPS and it gives you a distance, the front, middle and back, if the flags in the middle or even in the back, try to land it in the front is that what you're trying to exactly. tell exactly especially on the shots that are going down canyon you'll really get that first hop again right time mm-hmm. right now in summertime it softens up a little bit because it needs more water so it doesn't quite play to its true characteristics but when uh when when we start to get in when the temperature drops and the, you know it freezes in that canyon sometimes and the grass isn't growing so fast and then the santa anna's come through and dry it out a little bit yeah you're literally sometimes landing 20 yards short and having to and, and running it and really guessing the bounce so there's there's uh Boy, number one, two, three, well, let's keep going, six, and then coming back down the canyon at the end, uh, 14, 16, 17, 18, all of them run away from you coming in. So, oh, wow. so, so not dramatically away from you, but enough that you really have to pay attention to how far you fly it and really kind of plan your bounce. So Fun. Yeah, uh, totally it's fun. Helpful. It's just absolutely just a thrill to play. That's why it's such a favorite because it's just unlike anything you play on a regular basis, especially in the LA area. Nothing compares to it as far as the way that it plays. Very cool. We're talking to Dan Martin of uh, Rustic Canyon Golf Course, but also swingthepro.com. And we're going to find out more about that right after we come back from this message. So Dan, I got to imagine that you're there's people who are putting from really far off the green. Oh, for sure. You're describing this. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you can chip it, but you can putt it. I mean, you just have you just have so many options. It's that's it's just one of the fun things. You know, people think they're gonna you get on that golf course and it just looks not that hard. And then as you play it more, it's just it's fun. When I host like junior tournaments, the scoring average on that on our golf course for what I think is maybe because I'm used to it isn't that difficult. It's just not, it's when people don't have the, if you don't have like a high golf IQ and you haven't been playing golf for a while, you just, you don't see how this golf course wants to be played. And once you see it and you get it, like you build a relationship with it, it's very playable. You know, it'll, it'll it gives up birdies and eagles and you know, it's, it, you can, you can definitely score on it unless the wind starts ripping, then that's just forget it. But, um, but yeah, watching people that are more novice and just used to like, oh, I'm just going to shoot it at the flag stick and stop it. <laughs> not so fast. <laughs> Listen to this guy laugh. <laughs> yeah. Not so oh, fast. No, you're not. No, I, I lie. Man. We, have, I mean, we, we, we host a fair amount of SCGA qualifiers. So you get a lot mm-hmm. of good, good college players coming down here. And it just amazes me that as good as they are at ball striking and how short the golf course actually would play for them, how many of them cannot break par. It just amazes me. <laughs> So, so it's it's one of the, it's just one of those golf courses where I think like a savvy like mid handicapper that understands how to play it you know, can shoot in the seventies without too much problem. So it's a, it's just a, it's just a, that's why it's, that's why again, that's why it's a true gem of a golf course. It just it has so much it has just so much diversity and variety into it, and then it's a wow. good value too, and it's fun to play, and yeah, and it's just an, it's in a nice area. The weather's good. I mean, so you just it's it's kind of a home run golf course from its inception all the way to the way it plays. And having, you know, having one of the best golf course designers, getting him to build that before he was somebody, well, it's, it's pretty nice too, but it's, uh, it, is, it definitely, is that what happened? Yeah. 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 Gil, Gil took that job well before he was, uh, as, as, as well known as he was, he was definitely starting to get into it, but he hadn't, he hadn't, uh, you know, gone in and redone LA country club and all that stuff came actually as a result of rustic Canyon. So, oh. Interesting. Interesting. I, I was looking at some of the photos online of the golf course and it looked like, I don't know if it's hole number one or two. I was watching the, the flyover video mm-hmm. and it was hole one or two has this sand, this bunker trench that runs for decades. Along yeah, that's, from- that's number one. It starts at about 150 out and then it runs down. So it's, it's, we, we call it a waste area. So we have, we have basically like, 
it's not a it's not a penalty area, so you can play your ball out of it. But yeah, it's got like a sand. It's kind of like a long Wait, sand can't. bunker. If you can't ish. ground your club in it, you, you can't. It doesn't play as a bunker. So we have blue stakes. Oh, oh. We have we have a large sandy areas that we've deemed as uh, as what we would call waste areas or kind of unmaintained natural areas, and then we have mm-hmm. actual bunkers. So. I mean, these days you don't find a rake anywhere, but normally you'd say, if you see the blue stake, you can do whatever you want. It's just part of the golf course. No blue stakes, then it's a bunker. And then you got to, you got to go by the rules of, 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 uh, of bunkers. But are they penalizing? Are they pretty hard to get? They can be. Yeah. Some of them are, some of them are deep. I mean, sometimes you catch a bad lie in it. So yeah, it's not, it's, if you, if you hit in the, I don't know. The, the fairways are the, the course is so generous. If you get in trouble, you took on risk. And so, I mean, yeah, if you get in them, you better be pretty savvy. You better be a decent sand player. But I, the, you know, the sand is more the natural kind of gravelly, you know, what you would find in that wash there. So it's not you don't always you don't always get a really clean lie and a very predictable outcome like you do in a you know in like a typical parkland golf course where all the bunkers have the same sand and and uh, you can start to you can you can predict what's going to happen. So yeah, there's a there's a there's a randomness to rustic that is just very charming. You know, even in the, like every bunker is maybe a little different than the other one. Like they're all good, mm-hmm. but it's like they just don't quite have the same texture feel. It's just this kind of golf course that was just like it was kind of uncovered and has it has as much natural uh, has it has has so much naturalness to it. Not to mention the wildlife is pretty crazy. We've got bobcats and rabbits and foxes and oh, and uh, so, yeah, you, you, and we got roadrunners. If you like roadrunners, we got roadrunners. Um, yeah, you just, you just see a lot, you see a lot of cool, we got rattlesnakes too. That's that's our, that's our, that's our bummer, but (laughs) you see, you see those quite a bit, but, uh, but, no um, sharks, just rattlesnakes. No, no, no sharks though. (laughs) (laughs) But what about trees? It's like, you know, because when you talk about links, all of a sudden trees are not part of the conversation. Very, very, very few trees on the golf course. Um, and they're not really in, there's, there's no trees that are really in play. So Mm -hmm. any tree you might have, there's some live oaks that are just, we're just part of the land that are, that exist on, on the, uh, in, in some of the, in the property. But you know, the golf course is not about trees whatsoever. So it's all, it's basically got the unique, you know, penalty feature to it is that the wash is an environmentally protected area. So anything, any penalty area you hit into is an, is an ESA. So you must take the penalty drop. You can't go in and play it. And that, that, that whole wash runs through obviously the whole golf course and is incorporated into a lot of the holes. So it plays to the left or the right and whatnot. So, you know, I, I find that people, when they go to the driving range, whether they're warming up or they're just going there to practice, they work on the same shot over and over and over again. True. You know, it's like, and it's, it's not how I do it, but I've learned not to do that. Mm-hmm. So I have various shots that I try to practice. And I think about what did I have last round that I really didn't do well. Let me go ahead and work on, on the things that I don't do well. Uh, what are the kind of things that you need to know about this golf course? What are the shots you should be practicing um, um, and getting comfortable with? Uh, airing out your driver because <laughs> you get a lot of opportunities to just wail on the driver. So really? def- yeah, 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 it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, I mean, the first fairway, it, you don't feel like it's super wide, but it is. I mean, there's a lot of room on pretty much every tee shot, except for the last two, you got to be a little more precise. So yeah. And get your fairway wood ready. Cause you got five par fives. And there's oh, really wow. no trouble for bombing your three wood up as close to the green as you possibly can get it. So I'd be working on, I, I definitely would be working on my long, my long, long game. Um, after that though, then it just becomes how many unique short game shots can you come up with? So I'd get your bump and run ready. I'd get your long putting ready. Um, and you know, that would probably much probably suffice to that point in time. I mean, you're going to have some mid irons here and there and whatnot, but mostly you, there's, you know, the unique part of the golf course is you've got five par fives and you've got two very short par four. Yeah. In fact, one's number three is full on drivable for many people. Um, so you're going to be knocking it up close and then being faced with some sort of a mid range pitch shot. So eight, you know, anywhere from, you know, if you're from a hundred yards all the way into, you know, 30, 40 yards. So you need to have some creativity on the way you're going to kind of throw those into the, into the, into the various, uh, into the various situations you'll find. So some of the, some of the pins are going to really require you kind of air, try to carry it in there and stop it. But a lot of them, you can just, you know, bounce it along the ground and run it up. Interesting. Interesting. How many par threes? I mean, is it a uh, par seventy two course? Par seventy two, so yeah, it's five five par threes. Um, a nice variety of par threes. Uh, uh, a couple pretty long ones, a couple medium ones, and one really awesome short one. 
got, got our own kind of postage stamp, uh, hole number eight, which is the same at Troon, actually. So it's number number eight. Uh, it's a little, it's it's the only shot where you really got to go. It's all air. So it's, a, you know, but it's a short shot. It plays at the max. It plays about 140. Um, and it plays on the front tee. It plays like 90 yards. And it's got a devilish little left, left pin placement. And then it's got a nice bowl in the middle of the green. So it gives up holes and ones. Like our men's club last weekend, holes and ones, two of them, same group. <laughs> wow. One went in, then one guy hit, and then the next guy hit, and that one went in. Two aces, no skins. <laughs> Wait, two swings, two aces? Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. And who paid for the drinks? The first one or the second they one? Might, they, they, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> that's really outrageous. So just a couple less par fours. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you don't yeah you don't get the you don't get the big time par four experience. Um, and yeah, th- honestly, I mean, when I think about the most memorable holes, <laughs> three par fours actually come into mind. The, the the front nine is much easier as far as like it's shorter. If you're gonna be like most people that are good players tend to shoot under on the on the front without too much of a problem but then the back comes around and you get some scoring opportunities but rustic canyon like starts on 14 you get a from i'm just going to go from the back tees you get a par four that's 490 ish got to hit a you got to hit a kid i carry a pretty pretty long carry so i don't recommend anybody except for a long hitter play back there um and the angle you have to take on it is going to leave you with you know 200 yards in so you got to you got to get through that hole then you get this crazy little uphill par three that can ruin your day because if you miss it long or left, it's over. It's double bogey, triple bogey. If you miss short, you can make a par. And then you go up on the 16, you have another long par four. It's, it plays downhill, but for the first time, you have out of bounds right and penalty area left. You actually have to hit a shot. So you've been just kind of like being able to kind of blow it around and not really worry about where your ball goes. And then as you come down, the, as you come down to finish this course, you got to hit a great tee shot on a 480 yard par four. And, uh, and it's downhill and it's elevated. So, you know, you know, it, it stays in the air forever. <laughs> and then, uh, you get another, another medium par three and then 18 is another demanding tee shot. It's about a 455 wow. yard par four. So you get, you get, you really like, you kind of get, it keeps giving you these great opportunities You can get it rolling. And then you got to play golf coming down the stretch when you're tired and you really got it. You really got to play some quality golf. I always tell people in a tournament, if you can play the last five at par, you'll pick up shots on the field. No problem. So you don't, don't be a hero. Just, uh, just get it done. Get it in the house. <laughs> we call that golf smarter. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> don't be a hero. <laughs> golf smarter. <laughs> um, it doesn't sound like kind of course that you're just going to play once and then go, well, that was an interesting experience. It's like you play it once and go, I need to play this golf course again. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, yeah. the people that play it, just play it over and over and over again. I mean, we have, a, we have a, 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 just, I just, I haven't, I've met one person that didn't like it. Like out of, you know, how many thousands of people that actually said, no, I don't like this golf course. I like Satakoy country club better. And I said, well, Satakoy is a good course, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> Cause they like parkland courses. I, I guess so. It's a hard one, right? but uh, yeah, but, yeah, I don't, I just thick, don't know. Thick rough, lots of trees. Yep. <laughs> just, Oh boy. All right, listen, we're going to take another time out and we'll be back. Cause I, I, there's so much more I need to talk to you about. We'll be right back after this. All in all, with the golf course, you are the director of instruction, but you have a very vibrant uh, junior program there. I understand. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, that my my and you have kids, right? Yeah. So my golf career has really always been built around junior golf, even from the days that I started in 1997 when I got my first job at a three par in Arcadia. Um, I've always been a part of the junior golf. Um, part. I mean, I guess it's really unique. You know, I don't come from like this really good player pedigree, like a lot of teachers do. Um, I was a decent high school player. You know, I could shoot in the seventies. I didn't play college golf. Um, I fell in love with the game after college again and started playing it and realized that, you know, I'm actually pretty darn good at this game. And I took lessons really for the first time in my life and watching a very good teacher working with one and just kind of how he, his name was Ted Eleftherio. He actually works for the PGA now um, in Florida, but working, uh, working with him and seeing how kind of, just how much fun teaching lo- looked like it was. I like helping people and it just seemed like, wow, I really like golf. I like helping people. This is kind of where I need to get here. 
And, you know, I, so I expressed interest in him. Yeah, well, what do I need to do to become a, a golf professional? And he said, well, you need to, you know, you should join the PGA. So you got to pass your playing ability test and, and all that, and all that good stuff. And literally like, like a week later, he like calls me back just out of the blue and say, I've got an opportunity for you at this three par. They're looking for somebody like you. <laughs> so the help of the junior golf program and stuff like that I said, I'm all in. So I went and interviewed, I got it. And, um, I started teach. I, you know, I, I got hired to teach, not knowing really how to teach, <laughs> and I uh, got my feet wet, and uh, and just and just have been doing it now for twenty. What was that? Twenty three years now, um, of, of teaching golf. But I've always been interested in in junior golf as my as my mainstay. Um, I started with you know my my the first three par course I worked at. I worked there for about three years. Uh, it became one of the first Nike golf learning centers. Uh, it was an American golf uh, owned place, and so they started the kind of a kind of a package player development type of program, um, which scared off the other head pro because he wanted to just do private lessons and didn't want anybody getting this business because it was a very kind of a corporate thing. But for me, it was great because it taught me how to run a lesson business and what all that was involved. So I was pretty, pretty darn successful there. I, I built that I built that up to a really, really vibrant kind of new golfer type program. We had a nice junior program, did a lot of junior camps. And then they moved me to Simi Hills and Simi Valley, much closer to where I am now. And I fixed, a, I kind of like fixed a program there. I went in there and went in there and set it all up and got it running the way it's supposed to run, built a, a, even a bigger junior program there, started getting into running junior golf tournaments and really, really enjoyed the, the working with competitive players. I mean, it's something I did when I was young. I really, I just think competitive golf is just a lot of fun. It just, it, it's the, I think it's the essence of the game. You know, when you get out there and you're competing, it, it's when you really learn the most about yourself. And so being able to coach young people in that and, and, and develop, you know, creative programs to get kids from the early stages into competitive golf is kind of where I started there and then built that program up. And then I really wanted at a certain point in time, I was like, you know, it's time for me to do this on my own and stop giving my revenue to a company. <laughs> and, uh, and I've got a, I've got a big enough base and I got the opportunity to hook up with Ventura County Junior Golf Association, who is a, a local tour. They didn't have an academy. I didn't have any kind of instruction that went with it. So I pitched them, you know, building an instruction and, you know, an instruction module to, to teach kids how to kind of run them through a level system to get them where they could play on their tour. And uh, th they were all in and they helped me get with Rustic Canyon. And, uh, and that's, that's where I've been ever since. So I've just had a lot of different types of programming and a lot of different organizations I've worked with. But I've always been rooted in junior golf, you know, especially since the day I set foot at Rustic Canyon. And always, you know, generally, not that I don't teach new players, but generally kids that are passionate about playing and want to be a college golfer, maybe an aspiring professional, whatnot. But uh, it's been fun, you know. It's you know, I've I was I don't know if you know who Sean Crocker is. He plays in the European Tour. I was his first coach, so I always think that's kind of fun to take. You know, this I can go awesome. look back and as a kid, that's uh, he was I, I took him. You know, he was he went from golf to I went mean, from baseball to golf, and I'm the one that fixed his slice. <laughs> and then he went on, you know, and with other coaches and whatnot, and, and became a phenomenal player. But it's uh, it, it's been fun. I got to work a little bit with Brandon Hagee when he was a youngster. He plays in the PGA Tour now um and uh and matt wolf used to do my junior camps so which is pretty cool <laughs> we had a conversation about him on an episode a couple weeks ago and maybe it was with roger and it was like the guy who was working with you goes i've never heard a, the sound of a ball being hit the way wolf does it it's yeah, like when I, he hits the ball, it, it kind of explodes and you just it's something like you've never heard before. Yeah, yeah. His speed is incredible. I haven't really spent much time with Matt in his older days, but I mean, that was back when he was like 11 years old and he was just a, I yeah. mean, honestly, he was not a, he was not the best player around. I wasn't even close. So he wow. he de he developed. He de That's I remember. Yeah, no, it, it really is. I mean, he was a good athlete. He played soccer and baseball. Uh, and was, was definitely, you know, very coordinated, very, very like outgoing, outgoing kid. And, uh, and really, really nice. I mean, really loved, really loved having him around, um, in the, in the, in the camps that he did, uh, with us over the summer. I have something called competitive player camps that have been going on for now years. And they're just a lot, have a lot of kind of fun traditions that we do in them. So Matt was a part of those when he was really young. Um, very cool. But uh, anyway, so that's that's kind of it's kind of cool to have been around some of these kids that uh, when they were young and, and you would not, you know, you wouldn't I just wouldn't you wouldn't I wouldn't have picked Matt to become a PGA Tour player. But of course, when he got to be 15, 16 and really became a dominant junior player, you could see that this kid, this kid had like otherworldly talent and ability. Mm -hmm. But uh, we give we give credit we give credit to George Gankus for you know not messing up his swing and making it better, and uh, and honestly developing a little bit of a methodology around it. <laughs> wow. 
Very cool. Um, so I was watching a bunch of your videos. Uh, you seem to be, I hate to label anybody, but um, you're very technical in your instruction, uh, even to the point where you've come out with your own product. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's funny you say I'm technical. I totally don't think that I'm technical at all. Uh, yeah, I, I, I felt uncomfortable saying it. But. No, I mean, it's, but I mean, I get, I mean, if I go back and like listen to my videos, it's really kind of a new thing to be much more interested in the physics of the swing and how, and how, mm -hmm. you know, orbiting objects interchange velocity. So that's, I guess that sounds very technical, but my right approach there, is you actually, repeat it. What? You did yeah, what? You're yeah, orbiting exactly. Who? Yeah, well, you know, so 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 talking about you know, exchanging angular momentum and stuff—that's kind of like a new new like uh, more of a, a new passion for me. The product I have is actually not my product; it's something that I was introduced to from somebody else. So it was something that was brought out um, by a, a friend of mine named Cal Lum. Um, he's the inventor of the product, product, but he his original the original thing just didn't work out. So they made a bunch of units and whatnot. So he kind of came to me and said, you know, somebody that's involved with kids needs to be involved with this product. And, and I've got something that's, you know, I've got knowledge that people just don't really know or hear in golf enough that I think could unlock a lot of potential. So I was kind of skeptical, but I mean, so over the last six years, I've been kind of like an understudy to some degree and really learning the physics of a golf swing, not necessarily the math, but really just really understanding how, how our body works to, to exchange, to exchange, uh, exchange velocity and exchange and, um, and exchange angular momentum and, and creates, there's things in physics that just create so much speed and power um, that's very natural if you learn how to sink your body into it. And so the training device really is about teaching you how to swing and the essence of swinging. And so it's very old yeah. school. I mean, it's very Bobby Jones, honestly, much more than much well, more than launch monitor pressure plates and stuff like that. But all of that is very relevant in, in you know, the modern golf swing. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised because, you know, I've been interviewing people for a long time now and the, what you were talking about um, made a tremendous amount of sense to me, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not something that a lot of people I've ever heard talk about. Yeah, it's it's unique. I mean, even in my, I've always coached the game. Kind of, I've always been more like I would say, like a like like someone like Chris Mason, somebody I respect a lot. He's a good friend of mine. He's a he's a phenomenal phenomenal swing coach. He always called me like a performance coach, and I have to have agree. I mean, my like roots in golf development have really been like Lynn Lynn Marriott, Pia Nilsson, Vision Fifty Four. Teach people I how to be. Them. Yeah, teach people how to like, you know, how to how to play, how to understand themselves. So my passion kind of lays lies in that. The swing development part has really kind of been, again, it's it's more kind of this is more recent in my career to get more into, you know, understanding swings and getting people to understand how their body actually works and how the golf club actually is supposed to, you how you're supposed to relate to it because nobody really tells people, you know how does the golf club swing? What does it mean when it's swinging? Can you, can you like, can you produce a swing? Can you describe a swing? Do you know what it feels like when you're actually swinging? Most people that play golf don't swing. They just have no concept. They have a concept of what a swing looks like, but they just don't understand what actually is happening. And I think when you can get that picture for somebody and give them a device that can help them unlock that, that can do, I think that can, that can lead to just like tremendous, I mean, I guess it gets the roadblocks out of the way. It's like, okay, wait a second. Like I have, I have a, if I have a, a very strong intuitive under, not done to, an intuitive understanding, but also like a, a technical understanding of what actually is supposed to happen and I can see it in motion, then I have a lot better chance of figuring out how to do this with my golf club. Um, the product is really the, the problem with golf that's not delivered enough is that your relationship with the golf club, when you pick it up for the very first time, is that you have something that's rigid and the weight on the end is is so much more tremendous than anything you've ever done in sports. Like if you pick up a ball and throw it, the ball's in your hand. I mean, it doesn't have a, you, you're not aware of its mass so much. You put a golf club in your hand and then all of a sudden you got all that weight and that funny looking club. What's the first thing that happens? Well, my hands start trying to like direct it. As soon as you start directing the weight of the golf club, you're, you're lost. You are in bad yeah. habit land because your body is going to learn how to make that work to get the ball to go somewhere. But you've lost – you've really lost the sense of what swinging is going to be. So then you're going to take lessons. This is actually what keeps us golf coaches in, uh, in business is because <laughs> everybody's guaranteed pretty much to get lost to some degree. And then if they're <laughs> persistent and, and, they, and, and they practice and they get some good guidance, they can actually become really, really, really skilled at swinging. 
So that's where the passion of the, of the pro is really, the product's called the pro, but the, yeah, the website's swingthepro.com. But that's where the passion lies in is teaching people how to swing. And it really is a hand trainer to some degree. So it, it's, it's not mm. easy to use. I mean, if you ever swung like a Medicus, a Medicus has similar, you know, similar feels to it. Is it, it won't stay in line if you start messing around with the weight of the club. You have to literally learn how to get your body in sync with it so it actually swings. Um, and so the pro actually is, it's a, it's, it's a lot, it's fun to swing because I mean, if, even if you're not swinging it correct, you still are getting a lot of benefit from it because you can feel the pull of it and you can feel some of the sensations that are unique to swinging something around your body. But the, the object is to be able to get the grip, the rope and the cylinder to stay in alignment throughout the entire swing. And that means that your hands swing at the same, that your hands swing in exact tandem with the weight of the golf club. And when that happens, the club becomes light and it becomes fast. And uh, when, when a player can learn how to stop using their hands, uh, one of my favorite local uh, golf pros, uh, Jamie Mulligan down there at Virginia Country Club that develops all those phenomenal players in his very unique system. Um, he, he said something that I've always loved and I use it for the pro. He says, you got to turn your hands. They're devils. You got to turn devils into angels. And that is a, that's a requirement for being good at golf. And I would say that, you know, that's one of the prime goals of my training aid is to teach you to turn your devils into angels. But while you're doing that, you actually learn a lot about how momentum is exchanged through the body and how force is delivered and how, how players create club head speed. It's four fifths of its technique. The other part is like, Hey, okay, how big and strong and how much pressure can I suck out of the ground to get it going fast? But uh, if you can't, if you don't understand the, if you don't understand how, how velocity exchanges throughout the body and especially between the arms and the club system, it's very difficult. And this is where the old school teachers were so much better at than a lot, I think a lot of the new school teachers that they taught you how to swing your hands and arms and let your body learn how to react to that. And that's very much my methodology. So I don't feel like I'm technical in that, in that way, in the way that I teach the golf swing, but I feel like I have a strong technical knowledge on how the physics of the swing works and getting better every day at communicating that you know, as, as simply as I possibly can, which is really my, what my YouTube channel is all about, is about trying to simplify the, uh, hopefully get people to intrigued and understanding and obviously to, you know, move product, but to be, have something that's very useful that they could use forever and ever to help them find their swing feel. Cause as you know, when you play golf, your swing feel is, it's precious, you know, it comes and it goes and can you, and you know, some days you go, God, I've got it. And then it's gone. I say, well, if you understand why it's gone, maybe you'll get it back faster. And if you have something that can model a swing and help you find it. So that's what the pro's about. <clears throat> all right. Well, listen, I, I want to, I want to pursue this a little more because, well, first of all, you just gave us the name of the show and that's teach your hands to be angels from devils. Um, and you're going to get credit for that line. Sorry, but we're going to do that. Jamie. We're going to take, take another time out. We'll call Jamie and apologize and we'll be right back. Sounds good. <laughs> One of the things that you do in your, your videos that intrigues me about um, the, the Swing Pro, the Pro. The, the swing pro, pro, yeah. You, yeah, people call it Swing Pro. Yeah, it's called the Pro. Pro stands for the precise. Pro. Yeah, it stands for precise rotational orbit, if you want to get right well, down to it. Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it the Pro. So the, the thing that intrigues me that, that you visually um, illustrate beautifully on, on many of your videos is the concept of a swing at a playground. Mm -hmm. Take me through that. Take me through that. Yeah. So, yeah. So without trying to get too complicated, yeah, without trying to get too complicated for your, your, your listeners here is that everybody's been in oh, a no, playground swing. Oh, no, they love swing. to get deep into the weeds. They love oh, okay, that Okay. All right. Well, 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 I'll still keep it. I'm still going to keep it high level. Just go. I don't want to get we'll that send deep in the weeds. Watch the videos. Okay. We'll send them <laughs> the videos, but give, give them an overview so you can get a sense of it. Yeah, so everybody's been in a playground swing. So we we intuitively understand that if you get in a playground swing, it won't swing without tension. And a lot of people want to get away from the word tension in golf, but nothing swings without tension. So the state the the, the uh, state of every particle being stretched in alignment allows it to swing and to um, and to exchange and to and to and pick up energy from something else that's swinging. So to keep it simple, you, you have kind of two playground swings that interwork with each other in a golf swing driven by a, a rotary body. So my arms form one playground swing. So if they don't have a certain level of stretch to them 
And then my club is the other playground swing, which is attached at my wrists. So my hands are a piece of my golf club. They are not separate from my golf club. I have to learn how to feel them be under a state of stretch like a playground swing so they can actually, my arms can transmit velocity ultimate to the club. Um, so that, that would be kind of like the easiest way to, to like conceptualize the way a golf swing works. So you, you fundamentally, when you change directions in your golf swing, you have to use your body to swing your arms. So most people don't swing their arms. Most people, when they say they're all arms, actually aren't even all aren't arms enough, <laughs> but you got to use your body's rotation to, to, to get your arms to swing as your arms accelerate, then the, the, uh, because they're accelerating in a circular pattern the club actually will stretch backwards and we call that lag, but lag is useless if it doesn't have tension. And so that tension mm -hmm. that gets distributed to the club as my arms slow down, as they approach the ball, that allows the, the momentum from the arms to actually amplify and it transfers or the velocity, I should say that it, it transfers to the, uh, the golf club. So the sequencing of a golf swing goes from the hips to the thorax, to the arms, to the, to the club and each one exchanges velocity through tension. And so understanding that, that tension being stretched is a good thing. What people call bad tension is really what we call contraction. When certain muscles tighten up and like try to add force and try to do extra things or do them at a point in time where the swing, where it's a, it's a waste of energy. That's what we kind of call muscling. So, uh, mm. so the pro allows you to discover tension. Um, it doesn't swing unless it's stretched. Um, so if it's bending, that tells you that you're interfering with the actual swing of the club. But your arms are very similar, too. So you get some insight into even how your ligaments and the feeling of your arms and your you, you know, kind of the, the, your from your shoulder joints to your through your elbows to your wrists actually have a state of being stretched or they won't pick up the velocity of the body. Um, and that's something that I just nobody I, I don't see anybody teach it. So and it, it's hard to describe. I think that's maybe the challenge that we all have in golf is like this is like a you can see you can see a good golf swing, but you couldn't describe somebody what the heck's going on. So getting the right, right. cues, well, yeah, getting the right you, cues. You see guys on the tour, you know, Ernie Els is a classic example, but guys who just have no, it doesn't look like there's it just so easy. It's so smooth and simple. Yep. And. And when watching your videos, it's like, oh, right. It, yeah. it kind of all came together for me on that. And I just thought it was absolutely fascinating. And, you know, I, we can we can go on, get deeper and deeper into this. But I really do advise people to go to uh, your YouTube channel, Dan Martin Golf. Um, you can figure out how to spell it. And <laughs> it's pretty it, easy. <laughs> um, you'll learn a lot from it um, because you're going to want to know more about the pro, uh, this product. Um, because swingthepro.com your website, we talked about this and you're going to offer golf smarter listeners a discount on this thing. Absolutely. A 20, 20%, 20 discount on the product. That That's awesome. Thank you. And also you're incredibly generous only because I twisted your arm, but we're going to give one away soon too. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, that would be great. Um, again, it's, uh, the YouTube channel, Dan Martin golf website, swingthepro.com. Director of Instruction at Rustic Canyon mm -hmm. Golf Course in uh, Moore Park, California, which is just northwest of northwest of, of LA. Angeles. Yeah, mm -hmm. of LA. Yeah, uh, Dan, it was really a tremendous amount of fun um, learning about you and watching your stuff, but then getting to talk to you. I really appreciate your time. This has been great. Oh, Thank my you. pleasure. My pleasure. It's been awesome. And as we just said, our next giveaway is going to be the Pro Training Aid, courtesy of danmartingolf.com and or swingthepro.com, whatever you remember. Uh, go to his site and check out the video. And once you see it, the concept will make a tremendous amount of sense. But if you just can't wait, then pick one up for yourself with a 20% discount when you mention Golf Smarter at checkout. And don't forget his YouTube channel, Dan Martin Golf, where he incorporates the pro into a lot of his teachings. And this is the last week for you to register for our current giveaway, a custom fit and custom made Edison Wedge, courtesy of Terry the Wedge Guy Kaler and EdisonWedges.com. Deadline to enter is midnight Pacific time, 3 a.m. Eastern, Sunday, August 9th, 2020. And then I'll announce your name as the winner 
on our next episode, number 753. To enter, go to golfsmarter.com and click on the Enter Now banner at the top of the homepage. This week on Golf Smarter Mulligans, number 68, we talk to another very, very popular online golf instructor. As a matter of fact, I've received multiple emails asking to have this guy on. Eh, he was on years ago. Sean Clement in an episode we call Swing Smarter, Better, and More Powerfully. Here's part of the conversation. How come I can't repeat my practice swing, Sean? My buddies tell me I've got this gorgeous practice swing, and then I get to the ball and I can't do it. I said, okay, when you're taking your practice swing, what's your focus? Well, I'm just swinging the club. I said, okay. If you're getting ready to hit a golf ball at a dress, guaranteed that ball's going to be further away than it should be because you're getting ready for the golf ball to become the target. So people stand too far away from the ball. Correct. Remember the feel of that swing now? Do you remember what it felt like when you whipped the club and you let the sole of the club skip off the turf and we're skipping toward that red flag over there? Okay, let's see you do that again. So you can have your eyes on the ball, but then make sure the focus is on whipping that club across that turf towards a target. That target is an intricate part of that golf swing. So now we got a repeatable swing and a repeatable focus. It's the focus that's very important to repeat. Now the ball is truly in the way of your golf swing. That's episode 68 featuring instructor Sean Clement coming out this Friday. Both Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans are free and available wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Hear new episodes of Golf Smarter each Tuesday and Golf Smarter Mulligans every Friday. And I want to remind you again that if you'd like a free copy of Tony Manzoni's The Lost Fundamental, which is only available from Golf Smarter, I got a simple offer. Just submit an honest review in Apple Podcasts or wherever you get Golf Smarter that is how you feel about the show. It really helps. Word of mouth is big, and you are a Golf Smarter ambassador. I know you are. You've been telling people you listen. Uh, but getting reviews helps other listeners find us that you haven't met yet. So to report your podcast reviews to me so that I can send you the Tony Manzoni video, please use at Golf Smarter on social media. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this show, just click on the Hey Fred button at golfsmarter.com.